There are three approaches to calculating gross domestic product, or GDP. They are the production approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. All three approaches should lead to the same result, though in practice there's often a little bit of error in the estimation. But each one also helps illuminate what GDP is trying to measure and what it doesn't measure. Let's go through each one. First, the production approach. Let's use an example. Let's think about the production of a loaf of bread. We would start with the farmer growing some wheat. Let's say that they grow and sell 10 cents worth of wheat to a mill. And then that mill buys that wheat for 10 cents, but they process it into flour, adding to its value. They might be able to sell the resulting flour for 25 cents, and so their value added is 15 cents. A baker then buys the wheat for 25 cents and uses it to make a loaf of bread. If they sell that bread for 50 cents, then their value added is 25 cents. But at the end, we get a final loaf of bread whose market value is 50 cents. You can see that if we added up the value added at each stage of production, we would get the final market value, which is what we want for GDP. The production approach adds together the value added by every business at every stage of production. Remember, this is just an approach to calculating GDP, which is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a year. We only want to count the final goods and services, not the intermediate goods made along the way. But the production approach gets us that result in a way that's maybe easier to actually compute. We can use the tax returns of businesses to identify the difference between their sales and the cost of their raw materials. Note that this is not the same as profit, since a lot of the difference will be going to pay the workers and the other costs the businesses face to add the value they add. But by looking at the value added across all businesses in the country, we don't have to worry about whether or not the products that they make are final goods and services or intermediate ones, which can be harder to measure in practice. The income approach is really just a twist on the production approach. The value added by each business isn't going to disappear. It's going to end up in somebody's pocket in the form of income. Economists like to categorize things into four factors of production, labor, capital, land or resources, and entrepreneurship. Each one of these factors is paid by some form of income, Wages are paid to labor. Interest is paid to capital, which are the tools of production like machines, software, factories, and other kinds of things like that. Rent is paid to landlords and resource owners. And profits are paid to the entrepreneurs or the business owners. The income approach computes GDP as the sum of all four types of income, wages plus interest plus rent, plus profits. The nice thing about this approach is that it can use the tax returns of individuals and households. For example, someone's tax return might indicate that they made $70,000 a year working as a software engineer for General Electric or some other company. These are their wages. They may also be earning royalties for a software program they developed, which is licensed to other companies. They may also be renting out a spare room in their house on Airbnb or something, and they would be earning rent on that resource. And if they spend some of their time producing artwork that they sell on Etsy as part of their own business, those would be profits. Of course, most people aren't as busy contributing to GDP as this person seems to be, but you can see how all of these then total up to GDP. Everything produced and sold becomes income for people, 
And so the total income earned in a year should be the same as the market value of all final goods and services. If it wasn't, it means someone threw their earnings into a fire, which would not be a very good idea. Last, we have the expenditure approach. The expenditure approach is the most commonly used approach in the US. It breaks GDP down into four major categories of spending. Consumption spending is all private household spending on final goods and services like housing, utilities, food, transportation, travel, amenities, and things like that. Investment spending is the spending by private businesses on capital and inventory. That's stuff like raw materials, parts, machinery, software, and the rest. Remember, capital is the tools we use for production. And then any inventory that a company produces but doesn't sell this year will get added into this category. Government spending comes from all levels of government, federal, state, and local, and includes only the spending on goods and services the government does. That would be stuff like spending on the military, police, building roads, maintenance on government facilities, and that sort of stuff. It does not include government transfers, which would be stuff like social security payments or stimulus checks. If the government is just sending people money, that's a transfer, not an expenditure. And last is net exports, which is exports minus imports. All spending foreigners do on goods and services produced in the US gets added to our GDP. But any spending we do on goods and services produced elsewhere gets taken out. The Department of Commerce runs the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which uses statistical data from across many agencies like the Treasury Department, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and all of these other sources to compute what's called the National Income and Product Accounts. These are estimates of the expenditures in each of those four categories. Then we can compute GDP as consumption, C, plus investment, I, plus government spending, G, plus exports, we use X for that, minus imports, we use M for imports. Here's the data for 2020. Household consumption spending was a little over $14 trillion. Private business spending and inventories were over $3.6 trillion. All levels of government spent over $9 trillion in 2020, but the bulk of that was those transfers like Social Security and stimulus payments. Only about $3.8 trillion was actually government expenditure on goods and services. We exported $2.1 trillion worth of stuff to other countries, but we imported over $2.7 trillion from other countries. So, $14 trillion plus $3.6 trillion plus $3.8 trillion plus $2.1 trillion minus $2.77 trillion gets us to the total of about $20.9 trillion in GDP in 2020. And that's how we calculate GDP.